one of the popular questions that i am frequently asked is what is the difference between java bean pojo spring bean let's explore that in this specific step i have already created a very very simple class you don't really need to do everything that i do in this specific step it's just to understand the difference between pojo versus java bean versus spring bean just watching the video should be more than sufficient so what i have done i have created a java class it's just any java class it has a few member variables it has a method to string and over here what i am doing is i'm creating an instance of that specific class and doing a sysout so let's do a sysout and say pojo now there is a main method in here so if i do a run as java application it would print the values in that specific pojo it's initialized with null and zero so that's cool so this is pojo a pojo stands for plain old java object any java object is a pojo as simple as that almost every bean that we have created in the course until now is a pojo a plain old java object now if you want to create a java bean there are more restrictions so let's say i copy this and i would want to create something called a java bean java bean it's little bit more complex this is especially because of something called ejbs enterprise java beans if you go back 15 years ejb was one of the popular approaches or one of the popular architectures to implement java applications not a lot of people use it right now so ejbs were popular earlier and ejbs introduced this concept called java bean and when you call something a java bean there are three very very important restrictions on it one is that it should have a no argument constructor so this one already has a no argument constructor by default even if i don't provide one java would provide one for me so this is having a no argument constructor by default so even if i remove this that's fine so i'll add it to be really really explicit so the first constraint is public no arg constructor it can either be the default no arg constructor or you can explicitly create one the next constraint is that you should have getters and setters so for this to be a java bean i need to go ahead and say right click source generate it get us and setters select all and say generate oops let's get them right so get us and setters above this so this is number 2 so one is public no arg constructor two is get us and setters and the last one is something called serializable so you need go in here and say implements serializable and serializable is an interface if a class wants to be serializable it can go ahead and implement this specific interface as you can see in here if i open up serializable there are no methods which are present in here so you just need to declare that it implements serializable now whatever we are seeing in here is what is a java bean so if a class contains a public no argument constructor if you have getters and setters and if you are implementing serializable interface then an instance of your class will become a java bean to be really really frank the concept of java bean is not really really important anymore because not a lot of people are making use of enterprise java beans the two important concepts that you need to worry about are pojos that's basically any class that we are creating in here and spring beans in last few steps we have launched up a spring context and inside spring we have created a number of beans all these are what are called spring beans so anything that is managed by spring framework is what is called a spring bean now that we have a little bit more background into pojo java bean and spring bean let's compare them so a java bean is nothing but any class that adheres to three constraints it has a public default constructor a no argument constructor it allows access to its properties using getter and setter methods number 3 is it needs to implement java io serializable pojo classes don't have any constraints any java class if you go ahead and create it it becomes a plain old java object no constraints at all and any java object is a pojo spring bean is any java object which is managed by spring 
As we saw earlier, Spring uses IOC container, a bean factory or application context to manage the objects. Any object which is managed by the IOC container is a Spring bean. In this step, we talked about the differences between Java bean, Pojo and Spring beans. I'm sure you're having a wonderful time and I'll see you in the next step. I'm sure you had a great time watching this video. Think about this for a minute. What are the different things you should learn to be a great Spring and Spring Boot developer? The fundamentals of Spring Framework, Spring Boot, Hibernate JPA, and various Spring modules out there. And learning to build variety of applications, a web application, a REST API, maybe a full stack application with React. In addition, you'd also want to learn unit testing. And after that, you'd want to learn how to containerize all these kind of applications with Docker. And how about deploying these applications to the cloud? Let's pick up AWS, the number one cloud platform today. Do you think this is a great roadmap for Java learners to follow? What if you can learn all these things in just one course? Yep, that's true. All these in just one course. Wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be a dream come true? Thousands of learners are already learning from this amazing course. You can join them right now. You can find a link to the course on our website, www.in28minutes.com. Keep learning every day. Keep learning in 28 minutes. Until I see you again, here's bye from Ranga at In 28 Minutes.